Yeah, for sure. Again, we're looking at the, the base level there. And Leland, I know we talked about this. You know, you were out here last week and we were talking about how the pad looks so different from the shuttle days. Uh, can you talk about what you remember and kind of how it's different now? Yeah, I mean, this the form and the function. I mean, this black pad with the white ticking and, you know, it's it's a really beautiful. You think about STEM education, but this is totally STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics. And I think, you know, SpaceX has done an incredible job of making things look really beautiful and functional and, and you know, everything just fits perfectly. And I, and I think, you know, when we were having our, our launch pad, there were hoses and things hanging off, but this is a very sleek and elegant and kind of futuristic look at the next era of space travel. And, um, you know, I, I, I just love seeing these Teslas versus the Astrovan. Are they doing selfies? <laughs> Looks like they're trying to they're trying to strain to see the top of the crew dragon just taking in the sight. It's pretty high. <laughs> and I don't know if you if you caught this one we, we we could see it briefly on the shot but the uh they the license plate says ISS BND ISS bound. Oh, you nice. follow? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully they will be today. We just need the weather to Say, I mean, it looks pretty nice right now, right? But, I mean, obviously it's not just what the weather conditions are here. They've got to think about downrange in case of an abort, mm -hmm. uh, make sure it's okay for recovery if we get into a situation like that, which is unlikely. So this elevator is going to take them up to level 255. It's not 255 floors, but that's 255 feet. The doors are opening. Here they come. It's a beautiful view up there too of the, you know, all of the surroundings in Florida and this national wildlife uh, retreat that we have here, but getting ready for the business at hand of getting in the rocket and uh, heading to the cosmos. And those are the stairs uh, Lauren mentioned. They're at the Two, it's the 255 foot level right now. Yes. I think I said that right. And now they're headed up the stairs to the 265 foot level. That's a level that will take them to where the, the crew access arm is in the white room. Yeah, that's the view right there that they're looking at. And Lauren, what are those chevrons, those white chevrons on the, on the floor? What do they lead to? Those are basically highlighting the exit path. So in the event that they needed to, that anyone up there needed to get away ASAP, they follow those arrows to where escape baskets await them. There's seven baskets and they'll hop in there and it's kind of like a zip line. Mm -hmm. They'll slide all the way down from that uh, fixed service structure down to the ground safe and away from the rocket. Um, we see them signing. Looks like they're signing something in there right now. Yeah, we give them a black Sharpie to sign the white room. It's starting a new tradition. Hmm. Yeah, we didn't do that. That's nice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good tradition. Yeah. Dragon, we see it as a 21st century spaceship. It needs to look like a 21st century spaceship. It flies like a 21st yeah. century spaceship. So, of course, of course, the ground support equipment should look like it's from the same era. The suits do. Mm -hmm. um, all of that sort of future-facing technology and aesthetic is super important to us. Uh, actually, right now, you can see that duct in uh, the, the hands of member number five there. Um, that is an ECS duct, or environmental control system duct. Um, once this original, oh, did one just, who just went in? Was that Doug or Bob? I think that was Doug. Okay, Doug that just was climbed Doug, in. Yeah. That is awesome. He's ahead of schedule. Somebody <laughs> tell him to climb back they out. Are <laughs> booking. It is great. He's ready. He's like <laughs> Leland. We, we were joking earlier about it. We, was, we were going to have to buckle Leland into his seat here to keep him from running out there. Yeah, if we had stayed outside, I was going to swim across the moat and <laughs> run over and get in the, in the vehicle with Bob and Doug. All right, but, uh, now Bob's going in. Yeah. This is great. So the suit technicians are helping the crew climb inside. Uh, they're holding back the hatch seals to protect the, the seals on the hatch, but also making sure that the crew doesn't hit their head or anything. So right now what the crew, the, the suit technicians are doing is they're strapping the crew's feet into these restraints that the boots sit inside of. They're then going to close those five-point harnesses um, around them. I know, Leland, you talked about some of the, the harnessing that you had in the past with the shuttle. Yeah, I mean, this is such a more sleek design where there's one point to plug in to get cooling communications and, and everything. And, I, you know, we had a five-point harness. We, you know, had these hoses and 
things all over the place, but I think this is a much more streamlined uh, look into the future of space travel. And similar to what was going in the ONC building during the suit checkouts, that seat umbilical is going to connect to the right thigh uh, of the spacesuit. Um, there is a fluid module that is connected to the spacesuit, and that provides fresh cooling air and also nitrox for the leak checks that are going to come up later. But the audio system is also going through that umbilical. Mm -hmm. So um, while the crew is, or while the, the uh, suit techs are getting the crew all, all buckled in, um, they're going to perform a comm check. And that's, again, similar to what was done at the ONC building, but this time the integrated two-way communications between the astronauts and the ground crew. And so as we just heard from Lauren and Marie and the team, they're getting into this capsule now. They're getting their seats connected to their suits via that umbilical that's going to give them hard line connections into audio for their comm checks, which are going to be coming up shortly. And again, breathing gas and pressurized nitrox for those suit leak checks. So this will be the second time since getting suited up that they've done these leak checks. We're just kind of all about redundancy and constantly checking our systems as we continue to count down. But I mean, there they are right now. We're watching Bob and Doug getting into Dragon, getting strapped in. Uh, before they connected their suits to the actual seats, they did something called a foreign object debris check or a FOD check. And that just means that they actually get inspected for any substance or debris on their suit that could interfere with those systems on Dragon. And to help protect against debris, the crew has covers on their boots as well as their umbilical port on their suits that need to be removed before they can ingress. So they've already removed those. And as you can see, they are getting strapped in. And once the FOD check is complete, our commander, Doug Hurley, um, entered first, and then Bob Benkin followed after him. And they're getting buckled in right now, as you can see on your screen, and attaching their umbilicals to their, their suits. The umbilicals allow the crew to have comms through their suit and air to help keep them cool, as well as delivers nitrox for suit pressurization. And as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, the suit's primary function is to protect the crew in the event of a cabin depressurization.